Hello Tubesters, it's Gav and welcome to another one of my videos. Uh, apologies for the bleary eyes or whatever, I haven't slept in weeks. Uh, you really needed to know that, didn't you? <laughs> I just looked at myself in the camera. Uh, yeah, we're... Um, she madly scrabbles round. Uh, I'm hoping the title will tell you uh, it's yet another project. I know, I know. Gav, yeah, just, just get the ones. As my wife said last night, it's very nice, but what about finishing the ones you're actually working on? Why would I want to do that? <laughs> uh, just a quick update on HMS Kent. Uh, I've almost finished all the railings. Yes. Uh, I'm work gluing on the helicopter flight deck safety netting. You know, the ones that they lay out on the side and it will be laid out. Uh, what I do is I, I glue them a big section on. Uh, then I leave the ship on my desk overnight just to gas off because I'm terrified of putting it in the drawer. It shouldn't be that airtight, but you never know. And then suddenly, <laughs> suddenly it goes frost all over it. So, uh, yeah, I, let, I do that, let it gas off. E even though I'm putting a uh, kicker on it, I'm still a bit wary about it uh, frosting up or using my precious paint brushes. Because what I've been doing is, yes, painting all the railings, black and then obviously the galvanized things galvanized uh, like stanchions that they fit on uh, I put those will be the silver gray and we'll go into that on another video uh, but yeah really I'm, I'm, I'm glad Paul did that <laughs> just doing HMS Kent because it's really pushed me on to to getting that one done um, so uh, we're not far off uh, once the once the railings are all done and so I've got them all from the bow that's a pointy end I'm not very good with the nautical terms. I should be for the for enjoying my ships, but never mind. Uh, and then to the stubby end, uh, bow, stern, stern. I haven't slept for weeks. Uh, head problems. Uh, right. Um, the reason I'm making this this video and this project is because of this. I did. I believe. I'm not sure if I unbox this or not. This is a Type Twenty One frigate. Uh, again, one of my favourites. I say this, but you know, I, I I was glued to the television like so many of us younger guys. Uh, I was fourteen when the when the Falklands War was on, and um, obviously I'm an ex-soldier, but I've always had a lot of time for the Royal Na Royal Air Force as well. But you know, Royal Navy, and. Uh, I never thought, I don't know why, I was military history buff, I, I was always following my ships, you know, building airfix ships, and then obviously I'd be looking them up, obviously in them days we didn't have internet or anything, but you know, what a few books I'd get from the library or whatever. And uh, I honestly never thought that we'd lose any ships, I was a young sea, you know, the Royal Navy, you know, and I saw our ships get sunk, and uh, some real heroes, you know, die on them and get maimed and have head problems themselves later on so uh, of absolute respect for for the Navy and uh, at that time period it, it was obviously it, it I think that it has been the only major warship deployment where that they, they've been with well, not just the Royal Navy but any Navy I would have thought really has come under major air attacks like that and potential submarine attacks and and things so surface threats as well. Uh, so it's always been as a as a na as a as a, a lover of of post war naval ships. That particular time obviously had a lot of a lot of resonance for me. Uh, the problem is this plastic kit isn't made of plastic. It's made of gold because you can't get them uh, unless you're going to pay gold prices for them. And I can't do that. But I was I can't believe how lucky I was. I put us I put a bid on, and I was the only bidder on this one. This was last year, wasn't it? I forget. I buy I buy all these kits, and they don't get billed for ages. And I bought the I, I got this on the one bid, and I swear it's for around twenty pound. I mean, amazing. But anyway, I I bought that, and to jazz it up, I bought this couple of months later or a month later I don't know which is the Flyhawk upgrade set we'll have a look at that in a minute uh, now it's only been, <laughs> I only saw this today I was looking at I keep 
looking at different things on obviously for this build and um it wasn't until I, I read somebody had done a, a when this first came out which was i cannot i've got well, I won't put my glasses on now but whenever it came out it turns out that there's like a major size discrepancy with it it's not a one in 700 scale ship it's actually almost almost an exact one in 600 scales to airfixes type 21. I mean, you only hope that Flyhawk have actually gone to the, <laughs> they must have used one of these, surely. So they're all calling it one in 700 and it's probably, this guy was showing it on his review at the time. He says it's one in 600. It's literally two centimeters, two centimeters, not two millimeters, two centimeters, too, too long. Now, I wouldn't have noticed I ain't great with scale. <laughs> it was a Type 21, that's all I wanted to build. And um, I want the Airfix Type 21 because for all it's, it would need massive, uh, oh, see I'm, I'm babbling, stop babbling Gav. I like, I found I really like scratch building. Um, I don't do it very well <laughs> and nothing's in scale, but I enjoy adding, I really get a kick on adding more bits to kits. Now there's a big debate, you know, I think Charlie Max said it ages ago, to him scratch building is making stuff out of styrene and, and whatever, not 3D parts and, and photo etch and stuff. I do get that, and to me scratch building is making parts yourself. However, whatever you want to call this build, it's a hybrid, or it's going to be. I'm not using the kit because this is too precious to me. And I'm about to. Oh, it's going to kill me. I've been. I'm going to show this. I'll see what. I don't know how many of you will even watch this, really. God, that sounds like on them Facebook. How well, my friends would actually do this. But no, I mean, my ships aren't particularly. People aren't really interested in my shipbuilding, but I love it. <laughs> Either way, bad I do it, but I don't care. So I'm thinking of getting another one of these. It's about 20 quid. Um, and my idea is. I'm scratch building out of plastic card the base ship of a Type 21 and I'm lucky that in this kit they give you two sprues they duplicate because obviously the, you know what the, the, it's easy for them to duplicate something rather than than separate which is good for us because we give us spares well I get an extra turret for a start we get a lot of extra turrets, but for different marks of this ship and for other ships in the... In fact, it's not just for this ship, actually, because there's um, the twin... Is it Mark Four? I'm not sure, but for the Leander class and things like that. But I do get an extra turret uh, for the uh, Mark Eight gun. Um, and if I couldn't, I would try and either cast it or I'll actually make it out of out of um, putty you know and I'll just keep working on it till it matches so what I've been doing is using the kit parts didn't realize it was one in 600 really <laughs> um, and using them as templates uh, for my plastic card now I've never done this before and even the bit I've done so far isn't brilliant and as I'm working on it I'll be working on it tonight after I've worked on HMS Kent's railings uh, but I just want to make some try um, and some <laughs> exactly I, I will not be using this kit ever I don't think <laughs> it's just going to constantly use as templates for others if I can really screw down the detail work on on this ship uh, I could make until they don't get me wrong once you know if they ever bring out they've brought the type 42s out which i need to get another one before they they become scarce again i've got type 42 but i would like another one but i haven't got i don't know if they do upgrades for that i've not seen any um so i wouldn't build that without the upgrades uh, just because of all the different radar sets and uh, sets and, and bits and pieces but the type 21 i really need either what is this again? Dragon, Dragon or Airfix. I'm hoping because I'm going to get Airfixes. I will get Devonshire. I just don't, just don't have the dough for keep doing all this. I will get the HMS Devonshire because I want to uh, 
converted to HMS Glamorgan and um, but I would like HMS Fearless first because I made Fearless as a, as a youngster uh, at the time of the Falklands War um, I think well, a lot of us youngsters rushed out and tried to get kits and uh, I, I did HMS Fearless uh, and I'd like to do a lot of heavy scratch building on her to bring her up to the Falklands era um, but for now I'd like to build lots of Type 21s <laughs> well you know every now and then <laughs> Uh, until I can get my hands on proper kits because it's the only way I can do it, it you know I'm not paying stupid prices for them uh, and I enjoy doing a bit of scratch building so what we're going to do is go down to the bench I'll show you what I've done what I'm intending to do and how I'm doing it and I'll just show you quickly the Flyhawk kit uh, I, I am understanding that if I don't I'm not very good with measurements and scale especially with my head but I'm hoping to use a lot of the photo etch providing I can get if I can't if I can't get another one of these which I believe I can these upgrade kits then I'm not sure or I, I would do it but I'd just have to buy I'd never get the problem is I'd never get the antennas and stuff um, and you've also got to be cost effective with it as well you know there's there's just so far you can go I mean 20 quid if I'm if I'm scratch building the ship itself that saved me the price of a kit um, so I, I can get like from styling models and that I can get the 1 in 700 scale um, I probably have to get 1 in 600 really but but railings and things like that so I if I have to I can scale it down um, you know, and just see where we go. But uh, anyway, let's go down to the bench and we'll take a take a look. Right, guys. I'm again. I'm going to have to apologise for the weird angle of the camera. Uh, the battery's just died. I don't have a spare one. I'm about to. I want a really short cable to charge it, and I just want to get this this video out there. It's supposed to be a pop up one. Uh, wait, that's not a pop up one, is it? Because I've done face to camera. Oh well, you know what I mean. So that's what you get roughly. All the shiny brassy bits on there. So what can possibly go wrong? But it's it's all the antenna radar fit type of stuff that uh, I'd struggle trying to get in scale, I believe. You know, if I'm trying to do it out of plastic card. Uh, if you know, push comes to shove, that's what it'll be. But that's the that's the box. Um, I'll quickly show you my efforts so far. Well, there you go. <laughs> it's well, it's pointy and blunt at the end. Uh, I want to get this round this way first because I've done more work on this side. Uh, on the Type 21, it has a this like extra, I don't know what you call it, <laughs> strakes, whatever, ball, I, I, I have no idea, but it's it's thicker at this end and it has a sharp, sharp sweep. They, they, look, they were known as the Porsches of the Royal Navy and the captains were known as the Boy Racers. Um, because they could go uh, extremely quickly they got gas turbine engines and I believe they could almost turn on their own access um, so what I'm trying to do I don't know if you can see under the, the dimming lights being white but so it trails off there so I've got to try and merge that in whether with filler I've, I have been trying to sand it down but it might need a bit of filler I don't know but it, it has a definite like sharp line down there uh, some will be cut out there for the anchor but the one thing I'm going to have to work out I don't know if anybody can help me is from here where this piece ends so I've got the grubby finger to here on the flight deck uh, it sh th there's another it's almost like this line here carries on um, now I've got to try and replicate that because otherwise it won't show up on the ship because that's quite fairly slab sided. Uh, I can't really push it in anymore because I've been building this under like the tolerances of, of of which I'll show you in a minute. I've not put any bulkheads in, that's probably a big mistake. Uh, I just thought at this scale did it need it? Probably does really. I have put a bulkhead after the fact in here. Uh, I've put this one in earlier 
Uh, not very good, I know. I'm not, I'm not very good at this type of stuff. I'm just learning. Uh, the stern, just that that's tacked. Well, it's not tacked on. It's glued on, but it's obviously got to be sanded in. Um, the flight deck will obviously come out here, and then this little piece here has a towed, like a towed uh, array type of thing that comes out. I don't know if it's actually an array, but it's a uh, it's to decoy uh, sub uh, torpedoes. Um, it's trailed out the back. Uh, there's obviously this is all completely smooth so it'll have to have a break water made by me because that isn't in the kit which I'm surprised at actually not the kit the, uh, the the brass work let me just have one last check no they leave that on so I'll have to put my own break water on um, you do get ships anchors in that that photo etch set so I wouldn't have to make those myself uh, so yeah maybe I, I might Again, after the fact, try and squeeze a couple of braces in, but I put a thicker. I can't remember the gauges of the of the. Again, I'm not really pretty good. How many times I said that? But I put a thicker piece on the bottom anyway. And this this is the diameter, if you can see, uh, for this. And then like it's almost that paper thin stuff that really can it sticks well, it molds well. So yeah, I've got to try and get that. I can't show you the the box art again, but um, there's like a, another line. That goes that goes straight to that end there. So I'm either going to have to because it, it disappears here, you see, and just has the just has the line carrying on. So I'm not sure how I'm going to work that yet, but we shall see. We'll work something out. So just to show that it it does roughly work, I'll put, hold it up in a minute. See, roughly work, Gav doesn't really cut it, <laughs> but um, obviously I'm going to have to mess around with this. Uh, I mean, this will be made by myself anyway. Um, we'll have our Exocet launches on top of those, or Corvus chaff launches if you're doing one of the other sister ships that didn't have the Exocet on. So I'm going to have to, it did fit really nice earlier on. So yeah, I need to get that flush in, push that in. Um, as you can see, it does it does fit when it wants to. Uh, but it, the whole idea is, that's why I did leave the, the, the you know, all these bulkhead things out, um, just be, because I wanted a bit of flexibility to push the thing around. So... That's not ideal, but then again, when, when I put my plastic card on, it's not going to be ideal anyway. So we'll, we'll work around it. And so there'll be, there'll be having to be bits of filling. I'm, I'm sure. I'm trying to use the the white the white plastic sheet itself as filler, um, rather than too much putty or anything. Not that I've had to use anything yet, but uh, it did fit a bit better when I, I originally was looking at it but uh, we'll, we'll get there as I say there'll be gaps I'm, I'm, I was never expecting it to you know to be an exact uh, fit but what I'll do then you see tonight if I get the chance I'll uh, I'll make a, a, another another piece of, I'll put use this as a template and cut out another piece of plastic card I'm using this thinner stuff only because this stuff it, it's it's quite hard to cut um, so uh, I'm finding that probably is a bit too much flex in it, but uh, I think when it's all started like that now, it's quite tight. Yes, it has got a bulkhead in there, but uh, so yeah, that's got to be. This hasn't been worked on yet, but that's got to be smoothed. Um, but as I say, it's got to still have a fairly sharp edge to it, um, like this one. And the idea is, I mean, I couldn't do a, a full whole version, I'm not that good, but for flats, you know, which is, I like mine in the C8 bases anyway, so I'm going to have this in quite some rough, some rough swells, hopefully. I'm not sure what ship I'm going to, it won't be Antelope, um, it'll be one of her sister ships, but uh, we'll, we'll work it out. So that's what I'm doing, yeah, it's just uh, using these as templates, so I'll get me plastic card and obviously bend it round here, get the size, and uh, and obviously try and make, put it into my own my own plastic card as well. So we've got a bit of a gap there, but I think we're going to anyway. 
I'm not that exact in the measurements. Um, but even that will push in and pull in to a degree. So uh, yeah, so that goes there. Then we've got obviously another piece that goes down here for the helicopter deck. But I just I was just looking at all this photo etch here. I'm just uh, I've got uh, these two. These two. And then these guys here. And then along with it, this is a, a nice addition. I forgot I had this. We've got the whole funnel section here because the, the, the kit one is fairly, especially the funnel details, fairly naff. So I don't have to make that. We've got that, which is brilliant. I will have to make the masts. Um, we'll have to whittle those away out of out a rod or square. You know what I mean, square beam. Now there's, you won't really see these, but they're tiny little antenna antenna pieces. Um, can you see the ship's barrel somewhere in there? <laughs> That's for the Mark Eight gun. And then uh, even smaller bits, and we've got some more antenna pieces here. See, they're the stuff that I, I could I could fashion out of plastic car, but it's going to be really industrial compared to these that have been obviously done on CAD, and then they're uh, life life uh, rafts. Um, there's, there's other bits. I've got about four bags here of, of different stuff um, that goes on somewhere. <laughs> Uh, and then we've got more uh, like tuning units or whatever. So uh, yeah, basically, I should have just showed you this really, shouldn't I? That's what you get. Um, so uh, and and in that uh, the kit as well, you get two links um, because they they obviously um, it's a separate, it's a double they've doubled up on everything so you, you get you get a few extra pieces which which is good so yeah it's just something i uh i've been fancy doing for about a year and uh i i just thought yesterday afternoon i'd finished what i could do on the actual uh hms kent in one and 350 scale and before i went on to some figure painting I just thought, oh, stuff it! I'm going to have a go. What, what, you know, what can go wrong? And at the time, I just thought I'd be mocking everything up out of plastic, and having a really basic ship. And then I just thought, you know what? I wonder if I could get the majority, if it fits with my measurements. Um, but what I'll do is, when I get start getting around to this stuff, uh, this because I mean, I, I, I could have a go at these are the window frames. Now, for me to do that, they would look really industrial, whereas here you've got it, and these are like the little windscreen wiper blocks that I, I made out of uh, plastic styrene bits. Uh, they, they're the motors for the, for the windscreen, but they're quite, on all the Royal Navy ships, they're quite stand out. Um, so, that you know, you can see the scales here. There's a lot of this stuff. Yes, I can make it out of, out of styrene, um, but it would look quite industrial so uh it's a bit of a hybrid isn't it you know it's um how far we get you know what i'm like but uh it's a bit of a hybrid but uh will it be absolutely perfect now well, will any matlo that ever served on these or on matlows in general go gav that isn't right that's not right that's not... <laughs> yeah i get it uh, <laughs> um and all the, the 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 proper modelers out there and the scratch builders i mean probably you know i'm not saying throw stones but obviously it's not going to be as good as they can do it but uh what what i get out of is, is i get another type 21 frigate and to a degree as many as i want <laughs> until they they make available either airfix brings out its one or uh or dragon bring out the type 21 again um, and just improve my skills along the way you know it's uh it's just something to have a, you know i'm not a great modeler well you know i mean that would be a real morale booster to to actually make your own form your own ship uh, i've got a big hole there um because 
I won't get it out now, but uh, this is all in one piece. Uh, obviously not the top piece, is all, all the rear, but uh, your sides and base are, are for the flat part of the shoe, because they give you two options. That's all in one, so I was putting it on a piece of plastic sheet and drawing around it more or less. Um, and and this is this sits slightly recessed, so it was actually smaller inside than I gave it credit for when I traced around it, which then pushed my bows out. As you can see there, they're not perfect there, um, but I'll fill that last bit, uh, and it's going to be waves going over it. I will fill it though, um, but uh, it'll have some waves coming coming out. I, I would like to do it in quite a heavy sea state, if possible. So yeah, there we go. Uh, um, here's me. I, I, I'm supposed to be putting an order in for HMS Fearless, and I start uh, I start work on a on my own Type Twenty One. But uh, yeah, a bit of a Heinz Fifty Seven, as we say over in the UK. A uh, bit of a mongrel build this one, but uh, I don't care. I think uh, from a distance of about twenty feet, <laughs> it's <laughs> it's not going to look too bad. He says. <laughs> So look after yourselves uh, and uh, we'll catch each other soon on another video. Cheers guys.